Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, I want to do a quick little video about the long range outlook and what to expect in terms of the weather. As you can tell by the title, it is going to be kind of an interesting one. I will be talking about why I believe that this upcoming pattern may potentially in around late September, early October break and turn into a pretty, pretty cold scenario for at least a little bit of time. And I think somewhere in that vicinity, we will see our first big winter storm. So yes, winter storms and cold are not as far away as it may seem. Starting off in the current time, notice that there isn't really anything massive going on. Uh, if you look above my head, that is a satellite imagery currently. There it really isn't any area of concern other than an area of severe thunderstorms potentially across the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma, and a bit of frost and chillier across the northeast there as this cool down that we've been talking about for a while is now lingering but it is beginning to weaken. I want to take a glance at the European model so notice that this is what it currently looks like again the satellite imagery does represent that pretty well and as I put this forward notice that into tomorrow and into Wednesday this high pressure that is across the northeast right now contributing to frost advisories kind of moves away and what we see is a pretty quiet and calm pattern across the eastern United States and southern uh, and southeastern Canada while across the west we have quite a large system that begins to move in initially fueled mainly by monsoon moisture but then it gets a little bit of Pacific help and notice that by Thursday and Friday it's spawning quite a bit of showers and activity across the, the western half of the country so if you live across Idaho, Montana, Oregon into portions of Wyoming, uh, North Dakota, even South Dakota as some of these complexes of thunderstorms make their way out from the mountains and into the plains notice that we begin seeing more and more of them there anywhere else it is, remaining, it is remaining to be pretty quiet and dry. There will be a few thunderstorm complexes maybe towards the south and east near the tropics. But really the precipitation is going to be quite boring. And in fact, it might not even tell a, a story at all. But if you do look close, again, as the title uh, suggests, I do believe that this leads into a potential snowy and cold pattern, at least for a little bit into early October. Notice that right now we see a low pressure spinning across the Great Lakes um, into next Tuesday, so this is a week from today. Again, still very warm. I'll show you the temperature anomaly graph in just a second. But yeah, the activity that I'm talking about may not come till late September, early October. It's not even based off weather models. While the weather models are showing a little bit of potential, some sort of storm system here, it's more based on uh, a pattern that I've seen happen in the fall before and I want to talk about that. If you watch my channel and you watch my videos, you often hear me saying what goes up must come down in, ter in terms of the jet stream. Where there's a really large heat wave, there's most likely somewhere a really l large cool down. And the thing is that when you have these really large competing air masses, it actually gives way and gives really, really good environment for cyclogenesis, which is a formation of low pressures. Because that low pressure has lots of warm, moist air towards the south, lots of cold air towards the north, and it provides its uh, energy to intensify. The worst type of environment for storm development is just zonal flow, where you have no real air mass, is kind of a mess. In this case, while we are seeing for much of the United States a warm side of it for the next few weeks here, it doesn't mean that it will stay that way. At this point, we've jumped ahead towards September 20th. This is 7 o'clock. And so, again, this is very far out. But what I am saying is kind of beginning to show up on some of these long-range models where you have this heat, a lot of it, pretty much anywhere west of where we have a little bit of that cold air making its way in. But the European has been hinting at this for a few days in a very, very far long-range outlook. And other than the fact that I have seen this happen in the past falls, and based off some long range models that I'll show you in just a little bit, I would take this with a grain of salt, but I'm not because of, again, the long range models, and I've seen this happen before time and time again. And what we see is an area of cool weather that finally sneaks in, and it gets intensified by all this heat bottling it towards the south of it, and we have a system that forms along that trough that jet stream spins up a little low pressure, and that thing explodes. And so while much of the United States is seeing really warm temperatures for the next few weeks here, as we go into September, or into early from mid into late September, the secret the secret ingredients for a large winter storms are actually being laid without every, anyone even knowing. And note that at this point uh, in the time, the European does show some sort of system developing across the northwestern United States into the 20th and 21st of September. But again, I'm not I'm not basing this really off the models at all. It's more about this pattern. 
and the models are in fact actually showing that which is funny enough because I was looking at this a few days ago and I was like hmm really strong heat September October these usually break with a really large winter storm somewhere that is a pretty early winter storm and it's usually a very powerful one because of all the moisture and heat that it has on the underside of it and look at this not only does it show this thing right which is a pretty decent sized system the European but look what it starts doing potentially right here so what we again this is very far out and I'm not saying that this is I'm talking particularly about this system but this is a good example of what these type of patterns end up resulting in we have a high pressure that is centered across the United States again delivering that heat it's stubborn and it's in place because nothing has moved it in a while at this point it's been here for several weeks and what it does is it's putting all this really strong moisture and strong southerly winds towards the north and we have a trough in the, in the west here dipping down and in between these areas if you have a low pressure which the models again are hinting more and more frequently at it takes this track and it develops usually a really strong winter, wintry side to it and powerful severe weather and thunderstorms towards the southern side of it. So either way you look at this, I think the longer this pattern holds with this warmth, there's going to be a little bit of a cold nook that comes along with that jet stream, a little bit of a low pressure, and we will see a very, very large system. One more thing I want to show you as I want to keep this video short because it's really more of a speculative video. But again, I believe that it has merit and we will see in the coming days and weeks whether or not it unfolds in a way that I think it will. I want to show you the CFS model. It's a climate forecasting system. Now, this model usually is notoriously bad because it goes out to 800 hours out. But the thing is that it's showing the similar pattern that I've been talking about and it's been showing it for more than just one model run and essentially I think it's just something interesting I want to point out to you so again the timestamp for when this is taking place and time is in the top right corner so this is for example right now Sunday 2025 September 14th so next Sunday at around noon time UK time so minus six seven hours to to, uh, to account for the eastern United States that would be around six seven o'clock in the morning and notice that as I drag this forward right we see that the, the climate prediction or the climate forecasting uh, system has a lot of heat a lot of high pressures similar to what we've been talking about but interestingly enough around that same time frame when that European was showing some sort of inkling of a system right it also begins to show a little bit of that 540 line if you notice at the very top there that little thin blue line that is a 32 degree line at the surface beginning to sneak down lower and lower now while right away right away we don't see a system what we do see is these large troughs large ridges and because of again these large warm air masses and cold air masses towards the north battling it out these systems become stronger and look, we have more and more tightly packed isobars indicating stronger cooldowns. All it takes is one of these to attempt to kind of nudge that high pressure, which again, you can see the CFS shows right there with extreme intensity into, uh, at this point, this is late September, early October. And look, we finally potentially see a very, very large arctic blast that comes in across the northwestern united states there's that classic high pressure across again the east now the the climate forecasting system model shows this way further out than what the european was showing but it's the same same type of uh i guess format where you have a lot of heat across the south and east you have a high pressure that's really strong and a low pressure that's also really strong they're battling it out they create a tight baroclinic zone and with that, there's a potential, again, monsters winter storm on the backside of this and a lot of severe weather and rain towards the southern side of this. Um, and I, you could go back and even in my weather videos on my own YouTube channel in the years past, I believe 2020, uh, 2019, 2021, 2022, 2020, almost all of them had a very similar pattern where we had heat followed by a large cool blast and it developed a monster snowstorm across the northwestern United States. So that's basically it. I just wanted to give you a quick little kind of cool long range forecast that isn't really grounded in the weather models. More of just, again, what I've been observing and seeing. I may be completely wrong. I don't think so. I do believe that there will be a, probably a really large snowstorm probably around that late September, early October time frame. In my official fall outlook, I did say that this fall runs that risk because we have a really, really warm high pressure across the central United States and again I called for this all the way back in August so now we have that heat finally setting up and then I do believe as the nights get longer the cold days get shorter the cold comes further and further south it interacts with that really hot 
heat dome and it spawns a really really strong winter storm so somewhere around that again probably montana wyoming north dakota area i will be expecting a snowstorm into the upcoming late september um, we will see whether or not i'm right or wrong but hopefully you enjoyed hopefully you learned something new and i'll catch you all in the next video see ya bye